Good evening. This is Richard Fields, and you're listening to and watching the Libertarian Counterpoint. Welcome to the show. On uh, the set tonight, we have Lee Welter and we have John Cameron. Welcome to the show. Retired physician, development officer at Pacific Legal Foundation, and author of Re Kill, Rewire, and uh, the forthcoming Aristocracy. Ar Aristocracy. Yes, SEA. Okay. <laughs> SEA, right. Welcome to the show. Foreign purchases by, of U.S. homes has dropped by 36% year over year. Who in the world would not want to, uh, what foreigners would not want to buy uh, second residences or first residences in the U.S.? Who, 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 who would that be, do you think? Well, I can tell you about one. It's an investment for some of them, or it has been, and they've seen it as a potentially profitable investment. Uh, one of my sons lived in uh, Corona and was worried well, their home was being built where they have to live in a motel for six months or whatever. They learned, oh, here's another McMansion down the street that's owned by somebody who returned to China for a year. So it worked out really well for him. And uh, it may be that the Chinese know something about uh, the future of the U.S. housing market <laughs> that they didn't recognize until recently. Well, I think that's part of it, and I think the the, the drop in in I guess the Chinese probably by sixteen percent of the homes and and is that that sounds about right that are bought for investment purposes here and uh, in California. Yeah, I think so, and um, that might be a nationwide number, and um, you know they buy in places where there's uh, where the NIMBYs are are hard at work, and so there's a scarce uh, scarcity of housing, so. Um, you know, they pretty much count on uh, properties appreciating way more than they, they should if, uh, if enough houses were being built. You know, California, you know, places like California, you know, Portland area, Seattle area, uh, Vancouver. Um, Vancouver is, is huge for Chinese money as well. But I think one of the things that's happening, and I haven't looked at the numbers for the rest of... Um, the rest of the world, but I don't think it's isolated just to, to the U.S. Uh, the Chinese economy is totally dependent upon export, and this little trade wars that are going on are taking, um, uh, you know, we're taking a hit here, but they're taking a huge hit there. And, um, you know, even though their market is held up, um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the cash that, that uh, these young entrepreneurial types and older entrepreneurial types company owners, uh, people who'd invest in the stock market, you know, they're seeing the writing on the wall that, that you know, unless uh, their, their uh, guy and, and the trumpeter uh, come to some kind of agreement, uh, you know, their economies is uh, not going to produce, produce the kind of cash. And then also in China, uh, there's been, um, you know, tightening up of, up of currency control, so they want to keep more money in the country and, and not have it fleeing. And that's, uh, you know, something we're very familiar with here. You know, our, our government, uh, you know, if you, wanna, if you want to uh, expat here, you pay a wealth tax when you leave. And I think they're... they're the the equivalent of an estate tax, if you... Yeah, it's an yeah. estate tax. Like, you're, you're, you're dead to us yeah. as a citizen. You're no longer a citizen, so you're dead. We're going to tax you, what is it, 30% or something? It's whatever, your, whatever your estate tax rate would be. Yeah, so... Um, I think that's that's part of it. And the other thing is, is that we've been, I, I think you could safely say, in a lot of areas, there's a housing bubble going on. I mean, people are, whenever you see shows about flipping houses and, um, you know, whenever liars' loans come back into vogue and, you know, whenever, um, you know, there's a lot of hard money lenders out there and a number of those hard money lenders are Chinese. So um, it's, there's, there's a confluence of things going on. And there's another factor. Uh, I know of a, a Hong Kong resident who made sure that his daughters were born in the United States, which at that time would qualify them to be American citizens. Still does, technically, I, I think. Well, there you go. No, I mean, I mean le le that's, legally that's, and constitutionally, it still does. That hasn't changed. Yeah, yeah but it's still, it seems it's under threat or under a bit of a cloud right now. Not, 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 the, not, the, not the, that's in the Constitution. They can't mess with that. They can mess with the dreamers who migrated here when they were two or something, right. but they can't mess with people who were actually born in the country. That's good to hear. <laughs> so does that mean that 
the dreamer Obama has. Never mind. That's a, that's a different. But, and that brings yeah. to mind. Uh, there's a um, fascinating book by a uh, member, a long-term member of the Wall Street Journal editorial board. Uh, Jason L. Riley wrote, Let Them In. And it, his conclusion, based on analysis of evidence, is that in general, the immigrant and immigrant families are more productive and more peaceful than the, the average American citizen. I think that's a wonderful thing. And that means we have some improving to do, don't we? Well, yes. yeah, and that's an empirical, uh, an empirical uh, reality that's been, uh, been borne out by every uh, reputable study that's ever been done. They take less welfare, they are more gainfully employed, uh, all immigrants from pretty much all countries. Another thing I think that's going on with, uh, with the uh, drop in uh, sales to uh, Chinese buyer or foreign buyers uh, is that China is getting a little bit worried, and they, of course, are a totalitarian state, at least as far as uh, the government is concerned. They're capitalist and totalitarian. And what they're doing is they're basically making it more difficult for Chinese to export capital, which has to be done if you're going to buy a home in the United States. So I think, I think it's the Chinese tightening up on any, any Chinese uh, um, millionaires or, or uh, rich folks that want to, uh, to uh, get a foothold in the United States or elsewhere. And fortunately, the rulers ought to be under a little bit of stress. I viewed a uh, lovely video of what appeared to be tens of thousands of demonstrators in Hong Kong pushing for freer reign than the, 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 the mainland commies uh, permit them. And yeah, you've yeah. got to admit, yeah, well, no. Exactly. I think that, that one that one demonstration they said there was up, upwards of a million people. Yeah, that was, the demonstrations were sparked by uh, a uh, law that was being pushed upon Hong Kong by mainland China, which would have essentially uh, made it possible to easy extradition from Hong Kong to mm -hmm. mainland China. Oh, that means you 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 you're a slave to the mainland, right? Mm -hmm. And well, I think the, the and and China, you know Hong Kong is a you know special jurisdiction within China. That was anathema to the whole idea of Hong Kong and to the whole agreement that set up Hong Kong back uh, back when it was uh, when it was uh, liberated uh, or something? you know yeah. you know separated from the from the British yeah. government. Yeah. So so that's you know and, and I mean Hong, citizens of Hong Kong are very very acutely aware of the of their potentially subservient role to mainland China and are very, very jealous of making sure that they maintain their so-called special status. That's what that was all about. But it's about more than that. Otherwise, you wouldn't have millions of people out there uh, protesting. It'll be interesting to see whether or not they're able to hold on to the, you know, the, the Hong Kong government backed off, at least for the time being, whether or not they'll be able to hold on for any length of time. That's, that's another question. In Sydney, Australia, residential rental prices are plummeting. Wonder why that is. Well, I think I have an idea, Richard. May I share? Yes. Um, well, it's it plummeting because it's near the South Pole, and that's no. It's plummeting because they're doing something that uh, people in this country keep talking about doing, but especially in California, they don't do. They uh, added 30,000 rental units in the Sydney area. Sydney's uh, got 5 million people in it. And they added um, 30,000 rental properties, and they have 250,000 under construction in the country. So, um, so the rents, supplies meeting the demand. Supplies being uh, put in the pipeline to meet demand, and, and there hasn't, an equilibrium hasn't been established yet. There are, you know, some areas where the the average uh, one bedroom rental was like fifteen hundred. I don't know if it's Australian dollars or U.S. dollars that are now six hundred in some areas. But I think that's an aberration. But they've certainly gone down double digits in some places, and with the expectation that um, more units are going to come on board, then um, what uh, what landlords would naturally do is find a way to keep people by lowering rents and getting them long-term leases and everything. And so that, you know, Sydney is uh, it's very similar. It's, a, it's on the coast. It's a 
uh, uh, an investment center, it's a, a cultural center and all the rest of that. And in San Francisco, the average rent for a one bedroom apartment is $3,600 a month. Compared to what in Sydney? Uh, 1500 yeah. 1400 something And like the that. difference, of course, is San Francisco prevents uh, basically any kind of building with environmental lawsuits, CEQA uh, yeah. lawsuits, uh, very, very restrictive zoning. Environmental laws that are, are ridiculous to the nth degree. In fact, San Francisco uh, recently uh, couldn't even build a homeless shelter because there are obviously, since there are no homes being built in San Francisco, many people are living on the street, they're homeless because, well, no homes to buy or rent. So the uh, the answer that the city fathers in San Francisco came up with was to build a homeless shelter. But even that's been st stymied by uh, a safe embarcadero for all environmental lawsuit. They're saying that somehow or another the uh, the homeless shelter will be uh, more damaging to the environment than people camping on, on the streets. Well, they, they actually, um the city suspended CEQA, which has become a nightmare. We could we could do ten shows about CEQA, California Environmental Quality Act, I think. And when it was originally written, it, it was put into place um, to so that uh, local cities, uh, counties um, had to uh, look at the environmental impact of any of their uh, projects. You know, any construction of office buildings, any road works. Uh, uh, anything like that. They had to, to uh, pay attention to the environment, report out on it, and be aware of the effects. So naturally it was written and it actually specifically states that it's um, only to apply to the government, but since it's California, they apply it to everyone. The CEQA has since then um, been applied to every development um, rather than the letter of the law that said it's only supposed to apply to uh, cities and counties and, and, and um, you know, governmental stuff. So they suspended it in San Francisco. And this, um, the Safe uh, Embarcadero for All uh, Environmental Group, uh, which is basically a bunch of local NIMBYs, which is not in my backyard, um, you know, they're worried about the drugs and the filth and the homeless population, the noise and all the rest of that stuff. I guess they're not worried about stepping over poop and people uh, well, you know, shooting, shooting heroin uh, <laughs> on the streets. Uh, they just don't want them to do it in a former parking structure, which I think is parking for uh, Embarcadero. That would be for, for um, the uh, baseball park. So I think oh, it's, right. it's right there. So... Um, you know, and, and that's, San Francisco is pretty crazy about this stuff. Um, you know, I, I, some of my donors live in San Francisco, and, and uh, it's fun to look up, you know, the fact that, um, you know, they might have paid, you know, $170,000 for a, you know, 3,000, 4,000 square foot house in San Francisco in a nice neighborhood 30 years ago, and it's you now $7 million. <laughs> so... Um, if you if you keep the supply down um, and um, you know there's 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 enough money then you know it's crazy expensive to live it's fine for the wealthy people mm -hmm. that can afford it it's not very good for anybody else no and that's why you have people take uh, commuting for you know three hours each way to come to work in San Francisco because they can't afford to live in it or if you read the Dilbert comic strip it's a question of whether you should sleep in the uh, a men's room stall or uh, <laughs> like that under, under a wet newspaper in the park. Yeah, and if exactly. you're an outdoorsman, you sleep under the wet newspaper in the park. You mean if you work in? In, in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. But, the, yeah. but the point of here at Boss. Well, they don't mention San Francisco, but they may as well. But, yeah. the, but the Dilbert point of here at Boss said, but there are lots of empty stalls. And the rest <laughs> of you can save money if you really want Another Dilbert to. fan. I like it. Yes. <laughs> uh, more Americans. Uh, on the other hand, are retiring abroad. So, uh, you know, uh, what's, what's that all about? Uh, well, well, you part already of it, told us Panama was on your list. Part right? of it, well, part of it is that for under $30,000 uh, a year living expenses, you can retire very nicely in places like uh, Costa Rica, Tropical Paradise, Portugal, a nice European location, uh, Mexico on a, in a beach town, uh, Panama, uh, also beach and mountains, or uh, Colombia, uh, which has both beaches and mountains. So why in the world would people who spend uh, a whole lot more than that to live in California 
want to save a lot of money by retiring abroad. Why would, why would they want to? Yeah, I know, shame, shame on those unpatriotic uh, deserters, deserting in the time of need when we need every penny of, of, their, of, tax, of dollars. their tax dollars to support the, the bloated pensions of public employees who can retire at who age 58. Who have a good chance to leave California. Uh, and, oh, i got to tell you a little side story on this. I, I know a guy, I'm not going to mention his name, um, he's a financial advisor, got a little piece of a financial advising business that's pretty well known in, in Sacramento. Uh, when he started in the business, uh, I don't know, 15 years ago, whenever it was, uh, all of his uh, clients were in California. Now he has clients in 17 states, and many of those uh, clients in 17 states are public employees who have fled California in retirement to avoid the high taxes. And the reason the taxes are high in California is because they're paying their bloated pensions and retirement funds. There was an article in our local propaganda rag uh, not too long ago about uh, teachers leaving California for Texas. They said the average pay in California was 77000 a year. You mean in retirement? No, no, these are, these are work, working, not even retiring. Oh, the average teacher <coughs> salary is 77000 Yeah. Which is the equivalent of $110,000 a year if you figure out that they're only working nine months out of yeah, the year. And, and, and reportedly, the teachers, in, the same teachers in Texas are only paid 52000 but their standard of living is better because on 52000 in Texas, you can, spend, you can live better than 77000 in California. Some people are in love with California, and uh, they're hoping. Do they that we still can... allow Californians to to migrate to Texas? I mean, didn't they? Well, I know the uh, state franchise board is uh, very, very careful about uh, checking up on uh, people who claim that they have moved to another state, to the extent that they will actually track your receipts, your gas station. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, charges, your uh, whatever, just to try to track how many days you're spending in California, mm -hmm. and if it's more than they think uh, is the is is uh, the uh, uh, legal maximum, they'll hit you for Declare taxes. Whether you a California yeah, they'll say you're a California resident. citizen, even uh, a resident, even if you're living in Puerto Rico. I know somebody who moved to Incline Village, Nevada, where they don't have to pay California taxes, and they also have a. Uh, Residents in uh, Palm Springs, I guess it is. Palm Desert. Palm, Palm Springs. Desert. Yeah. 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 And uh, she said, "We can't live in California more than short of six months out of the year." Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of, and that's kind of close Nevada. because six months out of the year, and if you you know go across the state line to shop for groceries, that counts yeah, as towards like your six stunk. months. I mean, they 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 are on that, you know, especially if there's a big tax income at, at stake, they're on it like a bad smell. Uh, yeah, Incline Village is, is uh, it's a, what's that tax haven in uh, one of the islands off of, uh, like the Isle of Wight, or what is it off of England that's uh, well, there are a tax lots of places. Haven? There's a yeah. good, Grand Cayman Island is oh, a good yeah. one. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. It's very comfortable with your scuba diver. You know about that. Been yeah. there, yeah. yeah. Good yeah, diving. Lovely. So yeah. we're we're we, I think we've uh, we've solved all the world's ills when it comes to well the, the weird thing about that we were talking about um, expatting and um, especially with Airbnbs now and and all the home shares and all the rest of that stuff it's it's way easier to be a a, a uh, vagabond expat. You don't have to, you know, just uh, decide you're going to, you know, do a long-term lease or buy a place. And in a lot of these places, it is, it is difficult to buy property uh, if you want to own. But, um, you know, if you can go rent a nice little three-bedroom, two-bath house with some help, you know, as you get older and, uh, you know, live very nicely on $30,000 a year, you could probably live like many retirees do in, if they're scrimping to pay for stuff in California for 20, but 30 in a lot of these places is a, is a darn good retirement. The equivalent of many cases of like 60, 70, 80, 100 thousand dollars here. So, turns out that Google and Facebook track uh, 
everybody uh, that uses Google and Facebook, especially or including when you go on to sex websites. Do you suppose that's how they got a hold of uh, Epstein, Richard Epstein? Uh, I think Richard has done so much wrong over the years that blind men could catch <laughs> him doing stuff. Yeah. Uh, didn't didn't he and uh, and and Wild Bill uh, take a trip in his private plane to, his, mean, to the teenage island? Yeah, yeah. Sick yeah. Willie, yeah. Willie and, and Trump. I mean, both of them were buddy buddy with Epstein mm. back in, back in the day. Well, the, well, the, trying, there's a quote out there that I like Epstein. He's like me, he likes young women. Oh, you know, the propaganda yeah. is that when uh, uh, Donald J. Trump learned about Epstein and his uh, violation of young women, he said, "You." Will not visit my resort. Get out of here. Get out of here. Well, that's propaganda. Well, it? who knows? I mean, I mean, there's also an NBC video that just surfaced, where he and uh, Trump invited NBC to do a videotape of him cavorting with uh, with uh, NBA cheerleaders uh, at Del uh, Mar-a-Lago, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, part of the video shows him being, you know, chuckling and telling jokes to Richard Epstein. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I mean, that's you know, that's 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 not that's not deep fake news. That's just so, Jesus there. I don't. Yeah. The the the. But thing the, the larger is, issue is. Yeah. Google and Facebook cracking you on on websites. Well, and and you know that's one reason why I'm. Um, I don't. We can't do commercial. Oh, I can't talk of commercial plug if I. Uh, if I mention money, but uh, I'll mention uh, anonymity. And uh, there's there's uh, I do fall into the trap because I used Google for so many years to, to use them to look for stuff. But anymore, um, I found that their, their, search, their search results aren't getting me what I want anymore. They're getting me what they want me to see. And it, if I go to this little thing called DuckDuckGo, what I get is where I want to go. It's a good choice. And yes. DuckDuckGo mm -hmm. is anonymous. They don't track anything. They don't do cookies. They don't do anything else. And, um, you know, I wouldn't trust Facebook. You know, the Facebook's got, got this new, uh, uh, what do you call it? Like Bitcoin. Um, Libra. Kind of, yeah, uh, Libra coming money, up. Yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't trust Facebook as far as I could throw Mark Zuckerman. I think I could toss him pretty good. Um, <laughs> but uh, I just... Google, you know, again, these these guys, um, you know, I got a buddy that's, uh, not a buddy, an acquaintance that's one of kind of the founding fathers of, you know, one of the Silicon Valley companies, and I don't want to mention by name or any of the companies, but some big names he was a part of um, at the beginning of, in, in the late 60s, <coughs> and he says, quite frankly, that, that uh, these multi-billionaire people, especially in these social media things, they don't even know what capitalism is. They're not. They're not capitalists. They're they're oligarchs. They're so in bed with the government. And and you know I think a lot of those stories about uh, where some of the seed money came from might might be uh, you know government. And NSA back. sourcing is yeah. It, yeah and then well so you know the fact that they're tracking it would it would you know quite frankly I wasn't surprised that they uh, have, are are tracking you when you go to places that. Uh, you know, might sully your reputation. Well, I'm worried I'm, I'm about being tracked because I visit libertarian websites all the time. I've got your I'm number. Sure some people don't think very highly. They've of got that. your number. Lee. Well, what's what's you mentioned that I I, I write and I research things like um, you know uh, uh, how to do uh, um, a uh, improvised explosive devices, how to oh, turn you know, things, how to turn things into uh, bombs. Uh, how to you know do poisons? Um, they got your number too, John. And and so, you know, I'm probably I'm, I don't know. I would I would think if anybody should be on a terrorist watch list, it'd be me. And it's just research for books. So, um, but the anybody who trusts an organization that um, is so in bed with the with with regulators and trying to pre uh, prevent competition. And um, really has made its money from day one off of tracking people is just crazy anymore. And I think, um, you know, the 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 writing's on the wall for both those organizations. That I don't think they're too big to fail. And I think they've they've outlived their usefulness, and they're going to be replaced by 
other folks who have a, a very straightforward business model. But let's, let's take a little time to talk about one of your Pacific Legal Foundation cases, Roberts versus the United States. It's a Clean Water Act case, right? Yeah, and, and this, this case is, um, it's, it actually uh, almost made me cry, um, which many of these cases do. Mr. Robertson is, was a 77-year-old uh, Navy vet who uh, lived deep in the Montana woods, which, uh, you know, thanks to uh, horrible forestry practices, basically forced upon National Forest Service by uh, the environmental groups who won't let them um, follow the plan that was initiated after the turn of the century to keep forests healthy. Um, he faced uh, the, the threat of, um, you know, really a firestorm. And so he, he was in the business of, uh, he had a water tank truck that uh, he provided water for firefighters. That was one of his businesses. And so um, there was a little trickle of water running through his property, the, the equivalent of three garden hoses in volume. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Robertson, um, Joe, um, dug some ponds to fill with that water so that when the fires came, he wouldn't have to wait on the three, three garden hoses. He could fill them from the ponds. Well, the... Uh, government decided that uh, he had uh, violated um, the uh, Clean Water Act in that he had uh, um, sullied or dumped in a navigable water. So, fire, so, so garden hoses are navigable now? Well, the, the moving equivalent of. Yeah. And, and uh, it gets worse. Um, Mr. Robertson um, had a... a um, public defender, and he figured that, you know, as crazy as this is, uh, there's no way that a jury of my peers will, will convict me, so I'm going to ask for a jury trial. Well, he got a jury trial, and uh, I think he won, um, the, I'm trying to remember, there's so, so many facts in this case that I think he won the first one, and they appealed, and he lost. And um, during the trial, it came out, and the judge told the jurors to, uh, you know, not take this into account. That the uh, the uh, the revenuers, the government Gestapo folks, um, got a criminal complaint filed against Joe by one of his neighbors, who had the the property lines there are kind of fuzzy, and Joe owned some property, and then he didn't, and you know, it, who knows where the the national forest starts and ends, and. Um, they said that uh, if his one, one of his neighbors, that one of the pawns was on, didn't file a criminal complaint against him, that uh, they would hold her liable. Anyway, sent him to prison for 18 months oh, and evil. asked for restitution of $130,000 shortly after getting out of prison. These are fees for public servants that are punished. And you came citizens. to the rescue, right? And Civic Legal Foundation got all that crap thrown out of court and got yeah. his money back. Great. Hero. Thank you very much. That's the show for this week. See you again next week. Same time, same place. Libertarian Counterpoint. Have a good week.